Yeah, same crap on every port. Just pumping out the chat so I can actually reges. Oh, yeah. The only trouble with these bright lights is that it washes out my screen. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't really help. I may choose to run away still. It's the freedom I have. It's not like anyone is paying me to be here, so obviously I can run if I want to. So I'm just going to get get this board out, have a look, see if we can spot anything. I've been getting a bad run of these sort of uh, all ports dead. Some sort of 200, barely starting, you know, just iffy, wishy-washy stuff. It's driving me up the wall. It's why I put out that bounty for seeing if you can make the board run on one side with the other. Not populated. What happens to the G3? The G3, I um, have to find some parts for it. What the frick? Yeah, this thing's been meddled with. Okay, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but <laughs> the screw sizes for these are wrong. Someone has substituted and got it wrong. Okay, I guess they had to, but yeah, those are definitely not the right screws. And the worst thing is, putting the wrong screws into this, which is the T-Con board for the display, is probably second to actually stuff up the logic board outright. It is a very expensive mistake to make if you go wrong with that. So hopefully, no mistakes were made in terms of depth. Are you going to fix Macbook? I'll try fix Macbook. Hey Alexi. Nice game of chess. Hmm, I feel like I'm missing some inference there. It's been a long busy day. We had to take one of the kitty cat girls uh, into the clinic and we decided while she was there there was a clearing in the vet clinic schedule and we took the opportunity to have her de-sexed um, and yeah, that comes with a whole bunch of secondary things that you have to deal with so that's done and now we have to go through the 10 day process of making sure that she behaves herself and doesn't get too bored while sitting in a very bored area, a boring enclosure area. Oh, the war games, okay. I just wasn't sure if it was something more modern. How do you expect people to know about war games still? It's like they took the screws for the side plates here and used them down here. Let's see, which ones did you get? No, it's got proper side plate screws there as well. It's like they just picked them up off their bench or something. I think the movie I remember more from that era is things like The Last Starfighter. I always 
for a small computer there's a surprising number of screws and all sorts of things that you have to undo in here. Hey Mr. Pedro, hello Ed Boss. B-Dog, which one? War Games or The Last Starfighter? You had like The Last Starfighter, you had Goonies, um, Evil Dead, Gremlins. Back to the Future. Ah, okay. Indiana Jones, I suppose, to Uh, Back to the Future was a bit too much of a documentary for me. This has been reworked. Fuck. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, reworked. <laughs> they replaced the left and right. Oh, why do I get these reworked pieces of crap? <sighs> Flight of the Navigator, funnily enough. No, I haven't seen that. I know about it, but I just haven't seen it. Why do I get reworked crap? Why me? It isn't fair. Oh, Frickin' heck, look at that. Look at that resistor. Now, hanging in there, buddy? You're kind of broken there, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Someone mishandled you. I'm really starting to get tired of sloppy seconds when it comes to circuit boards. I know, I know, you know, someone's got to, you know, I myself have done repair jobs that I can't fix and so I run off and send it to someone else's chance to, that they may be able to fix it, but, um, yeah, and it seems to happen a lot with these 820850 boards for some reason, I don't know, it just seems to attract people that have a good shot at it first and then I'm like, yep, well, here we are. Actually, I'm thankful for the chance to try and fix it. Yeah, is this going to be a... Okay, so schematics. Fifty-one oh six. What did you knock off? DFR touch lid open. Hmm. Open if low. Well, yeah, nothing significant, certainly shouldn't stop it, but nonetheless, it's still... It's still, to me, it's sort of a sign of what I'm having to deal with. It's like, it gives you a pretty good idea of the way it was handled prior. I mean, okay, maybe this was just a... Perhaps this was just a bit of bad luck, and I mean, goodness knows that's easy enough to happen. I mean, the number of times that I have inadvertently knocked stuff and gone, oops. But I, oh, look at that, that's nicely broken in half. That's a good job. Ah, I lost it. Damn it, see, there you are. I just made a mistake. I lost the part. So yeah, mistakes happen. And we are intrinsically flawed. Okay, what is that? That's 100k. Which I might just have an 850 board I can steal it from. Yeah, I do. I mean, I swear, my donor boards get less damage. 
you watch all this owner board's gonna have a busted off resistor. Oh, amazingly it doesn't. Yeah, there must not be much of a ground plane around here because these are lifting off real quick. Oh great, now I have got... That there's the end cap of the old resistor sitting on the tip. Alright, well I can assure you that really would have nothing to do with the actual fault that we're dealing with so I'm going to do a static analysis here I'm just going to look for some shorts maybe some slacks, perhaps a skirt to know the fuse is still working. As a double bonus of course I have not been notified as to what the actual symptoms of this board are. I mean other than the fact that clearly we're not getting more than five volts. But it'd be nice what it was originally in for. I suppose the chances are it originally was in for no power. Hmm. I don't normally expect that to be open. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, that should be normally 6 1 or so. Okay, they're the CC lines. But it's just interesting that they've taken um, the bottom ones of both sides. Normally, you sort of find both chips on one side have been replaced. So this is an interesting... Oh, I was going to say, why have I got no beeping on that? It's because I wasn't in continuity mode. smashed up and ugly. I mean, it looks a little bit corroded, but I'm not sure I would consider it to be problematic. As long as we get less than 10k, it's just part of the protection circuitry. Yeah, no, I don't think that's anything worth noting.
Let's see what PV Bus is doing. What you doing, PV Bus? Yeah, seems okay. Now, of course, I do have a sequence I can run through, but I do like to prefer, I do like to do a visual check first. And let's scan the PMIX, see if it's got any bobbly marks or distortions on it. The PMIX seems okay. And now we'll go and we'll check continuity on all the PMIX outputs. See if anything beeps. Usually though, if it's a PMIC output rail issue, it tends to oscillate. Like you go 200 or 400, 0, 200, 400, 0. But this isn't, it's, this is just locking in at 200 and staying there. Yeah, that's a ground point. At least I think it is. Yeah, that's ground. <sighs> the other thing I can do is I can hook up the gym cam. And with the gym cam, what we're probably going to see is that T2 is going to light up like a Christmas tree. And when it does that, we'll say, well, it was nice knowing you. We're out of here. I mean, that said, oh, what is that? Or is it just junk? Yeah, it's just junk. I was hoping that was like a ruptured cap, but nope. Junk, there we go. That's a little more interesting, mostly because we've got a resistor in there. Let's see, as bright as I can go. Wrong way, Paul. Okay, that's as bright as we can go. Hey, repair it all. Don't mind me, I'm just spewing and stuff. Okay, what do we want? Uh, let's see, it's this one here, 7154, CPU, GT, current, something, something in the something, something system, some, CPU, so graphics, current, some, output, Hey, host. Well, yeah, it's certainly something to take note of, and I'm obviously going to clean that up, but we're not even getting to the point where that would come into play. You have to have a system up and running before we even get that to take effect of anything but it does indicate to me that we are l likely dealing with what was an originally a corrosion issue let's say just a bit of flux might fix this up yeah It's an unusual resistor though, 332 ohms, so it's, it's quite specific.
let's create bridges by not having enough flux. I don't know why I'm holding back on the flux. I guess mostly the reason why I hold back on the flux, even if I know I am going to be ultrasonic cleaning it, is because flux has a tendency, of course, to obstruct a clear view of what you're looking at. So once you put it down, you know, it spreads around and it, yeah, it just makes the board look a little less presentable. I just wanted to see that those pads were viable under there. They are. This is not meant to be a bridge, so I'm removing it. be blood so it makes me wonder given that we had corrosion there are there bits of corrosion that are now buried under here that we can't find or washed away oh, that up. Oh, that's micro. We'll just tackle that in a couple of minutes. Hey Mark. Yeah, as suspected, you know, what we did really doesn't have anything to do with getting the 20 volts up and running. We'll do the uh, cheat diode mode test. Who knows, it might actually reveal something. Find maybe one out of ten attempts. Gives us a slight win. Oh, the other reason why I'm not tackling the G3 at the moment is because I'm waiting for a new battery to arrive. Hey, Prada. Well, no complaints on that one. Yeah, man. 
no complaints on that one either. So, I mean, that's pretty much 90% 90, 90 of the time, that's what's going to happen. It's going to come back and say, there's nothing wrong with the particular diode mode of those pins. So, I mean, yeah, the tool does its job. But it's a small subset of things it can test. Yeah, all right. Okay, listen, I'm going to go give Micro his injection and I'll be back. I'll just I'll put my headset down over here. And then you can hear you all talk to each other. Talk to each other. Ah, another insulate. insulin shot done. Right, keep my torch handy. Around here you got to have a torch on the ready, always. Ah, so what am I doing? Oh, right, yeah, okay. So now at this point we're going to have to do active testing. That is, we are going to apply power to the ports and see what they're doing.
So if we have a look, we got notes and solutions. Well, we'll try this one here. This one usually works up the U3200, I think it is. Did I not? Yeah. Uh, U3100, my bad. Yep. So we'll go for quad mode here. So you lose resolution on everything, but at least you get the picture. You get to watch everything, but you don't get quite as much of it. And we will place the retainer bracket on there as well to save me cussing and swearing like a sailor every time I move and it detaches from the board. Um, but you can't, the, for flexboard view, the PDF reader that is in it is the one that you can, that you can't use another one because of the fact that there's no, um, there's a lot of communication that goes on between the two products. You can't just swap it out with another PDF viewer. You have to use the one that's provided. Sorry. Oh, Jesus Christ, that... Uh, this is turning into one of those shit nights. I just see 700 milliamp kick in there. No, it was it just an illusion in my brain. Okay, voltage mode. Check that we actually got volts on the fuse first. We do. Ach, I was supposed to actually be doing diode mode tests initially. Yeah, sorry, Andy. Uh, it's, it's just one of those things that because of the level of integration required in order to obtain that bi-directional behavior, it's got to be done that way. Okay, they're done. Oh, hell, man. Okay. This is for clock and data lines. Uh, okay, I've got them. Which one is this? This is that one there. Or four. Hmm, reckons it should be a little more than that. Okay, well they're matching anyway. Even though it says around 0 0.6, 0 0.44, we're going to accept it. The main thing with a lot of diode mode measurements is that the, well, particularly when it comes to clock lines and data lines of a particular bus so long as they're equivalent so it could be 0.7 so long as the other one is also 0.7 then you're, you're going to be good okay uh, we have 5 volts Let's go. So we've got this stage done. And now we start attacking the test points. 3.3. We're just going to watch it, make sure it doesn't jump anywhere significant. Seems pretty steady. 3.4. Uh, next test point. 1.8. That's good. Next one, one eight. This is the one point one. This is the important one. We got nothing, nothing on one point one. All right. So when you get nothing on one point one, 
So the first thing you want to try is change this chip here, which is the Thunderbolt ROM chip for the controller. So fortunately we do have a full supply of those that we can program. So it's finally check yes I checked it in my this get data on GitHub and update flexible view. Get data on GitHub. What data are you getting on GitHub? Well the uh, open board data is no longer using GitHub, it's got its own web server now which feeds directly into Flexboard view. I gotta make sure I don't heat this up too much. Thank goodness for Harold producing this board. Um, Andy, probably easiest. Well, what version are you running right now? Probably easiest just to get another package, unpack it and run it direct from the new package. Hey dear Jason, are you back in Australia Jason? <sighs> we are on tonight, okay cool. for me. Ah, it's going to be a wasabi plant. Not that a good idea to give me a wasabi plant. I will probably kill it. They grow okay in New Zealand, I think. Yeah, yeah that's what I was after. And oh, geez, we've got enough kitties. No more kitties. Okay, 289 years, the one that I'm after. So, funnily enough, it is actually, I can pretty much just write it straight like that. This one here, 1954. You shouldn't be sending me gifts, Jason, because I send you invoices. That, that processing those invoices is your constant gift to me. Alrighty, we have that chip flashed, so that's got the new firmware on it. Let's see if we have any luck. Of course, it's entirely possible that both of them are botched up now. Well, we'll see, here we go. And yeah, like I said, really big thanks to Harold for producing these, those boards. It makes dealing with these chips just so much easier prior to getting those boards from Harold 
trying to flash those Thunderbolt ROM chips was a real exercise in frustration. Hey John, I can send you an invoice. What's it going to be for? Oh, jeez. The other possibility, of course, is that the communication lines to this chip from the CE3215 are problematic. I probably should have actually tested those lines before I did the replacement, but... Uh, why? Gripping on a little bit too tight, it seems. To give you an idea of how busy I have been, it's been over two weeks since I have even touched seven days to die. Hey John, yeah, that'd be a good idea. You can pay me for my lifetime, sounds good. Brilliant idea, yes, let's do that. I got a uh, contribution the other night for some software I wrote nearly, well, over 20 years ago now. So that was a nice thing. There's a product I produced, you know, some, I think it was back in 1999 or something like that. And it allows you to modify the um, the text in an email as it gets processed through a mail server. So even if the person themselves didn't put that text in there, the server can insert it into certain places. And yeah, so I get people occasionally sending me money as thanks for writing that. And likewise, there's a, another program I wrote which um, takes an email and breaks it down into all its constituent parts and I've actually got quite a lot of money for that one but it's not something you can live off so when people tell you you should just write open source software and people will pay you and you know you'll be fine it's you know for the most part that's a load of bullshit because really you know if I took how much I've earned maybe six seven thousand dollars people have given me over the years you spread that over 20 years, you, you're going to be broke. Alright, so as predicted, nothing really changed, but let us see if we have 2.1 volts. Hey, Oz Electronics. Okay, let's see if we've got our 2.1 uh, 1 .1 rather. And yeah, as expected, we do not have our 1.1. .1. Alright, let's go have a look at the actual ROM chip itself and see if we have appropriate voltages there. What you doing, Oz Electronics? Did you fix anything interesting today? Let's see, Mossy Clock Hold LDO. Okay, that's probably got to be W3V3 LDO, yep. So we got a 3.3 .3 there? We do. Okay, I'm going to disconnect power, switch over to diode mode, and compare with the values that we have pulled down from open board data. Yeah, Tony, it's, it's a pretty piss poor return on investment. To be fair, the reason why it was written in the first place was because it was part of my commercial software at the time. Okay, 4.4 four to 4.9, that's tolerable. 6.7 to 7.12, good again. 5.5, five, 5.7, five, five, that's fine. 
six two one yeah that's fine let's go to the top set It's a nice sort of, consider it more of like a nice bonus when it happens, but that's about all it will ever be. But the real value for me was it entrenched uh, my name at the time as a person and business for that kind of thing. Okay, five, eight. Yeah, everything's reading pretty good there. Hey, G Man. Oh, you got the 1700 board. Haha, <laughs> DFU mode. When batteries are connected, the voltage is 5. When batteries are disconnected. Ah, uh, yay. Yeah, G Man, those 1700 boards. I don't even know where to begin with them, to be honest, sometimes. Just like I'm really, really struggling here. as to why I'm not getting my 1.2 I would say you know what I've just noticed something I reckon these are fakes I think these are fake CD3215s I just noticed that there is a look of the font that they've used and the way that they've done it it looks fake to me there's just something about that that doesn't look right I'm probably wrong but it just sort of struck me then so this is the replacement sort of get a uh, put it into full screen sort of you know get a grasp for that font and stuff like that and then this is an original okay now they do have variations so that's to be expected but I am gonna say 50% chance that's a fake CD3215 in my opinion it just feels like a fake something wrong with it and the the edges of it they are not quite cut sharp properly now the only reason why I even think about fakes is because I know I got a spool of quite a few CD3215s that were all delightfully fake and that cost me God, holy crap over um, that cost me quite a lot in terms of lost jobs time everything I mean I could be wrong wouldn't be the first time they're either fakes or deads or something I don't know I mean the patterning looks right But I do wonder, you know, when we say fake, as I, I can't imagine they would make an entire chip for the sake of fake. So if it's not a real CD3215, then what is it actually? Yeah, are they just um, reject 3215s or are they sort of like the the um, commercially publicly available clone of the 3215 oh, I shouldn't say clone but actually the the real chip that Apple went along and said you know what we'll take a modified version of that How do you test a fake? Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? How do you test CD3215s? I reckon there'd be decent money in someone making a... I would say $100 CD3215 tester. If someone came up with a $100 CD3215 tester that you could just put the chip into and it comes up and says yay or nay, well, that'd, 
they'd make a decent sale out of that. Hey, Catherine. See how it makes a lot of... Yeah, they do make a lot of chips in the same format. But yeah, I just... I don't know, it just didn't feel like a real CD3215. And I have one left. Oh no, wait, one, two. I've got two left. Awesome. I should compare the fake to the real. Yeah, this is uh, genuinely freshly rebuilt. Just flip them over and have a look at the. The big thing that strikes me, the most significant thing that strikes me of this is the lack of depth in the laser cut for the words. It's a very light laser burn, whereas these ones are always deeper. There are some others that are a bit shallower, but we'll visit that in a second. I'm going to put this one in and we'll have a look at a whole batch of CD3215s that I have. Oh, naturally that's too much flux. It's like Rossman orgy flux levels. Completely undesirable. Hey creature. Creatures here to be our favorite critic. So feel free to pay out on Creature if he gets too critical of things. He can't help himself. He just needs someone to rein him in. It's just what he does. It's what makes him such a perfectionist. But at the same time, very annoying. Hello creature, nice to see you. <laughs> I've known him for a very long time. What the hell man, is that even reflowed? Hey Drachev. Yeah, I really actually don't know if that reflowed or not. Sometimes you do a really stupid thing and you get the chip perfectly on its pads. Yeah, that's definitely swimming, so yeah, that's good. Oh, uh, something beeped. Uh, could have been anything. But no, it's, it's in diode mode anyway. cooling off the board a bit. So I'm not expecting us to get 20 volts, but I am hoping we will get 1.1 volts. That will be a nice step up.
Okay, we're still sort of holding the 300 milliamp situation there, but like I said, we're going to see if we have 1.1 now. I can't remember which one it is. 3.3. And yeah, we've got 1.1 now. So either it was a bad CD3215 or it was a fake 3215. Peridol is going to get banned. Yeah, that creature, what do you think? I'm pretty sure these are fake chips. The laser markings are extremely shallow. The font seems wrong. And the quality of the top, it looks like it's been relayed. And the cut is not even actually square now that I think about it. It's slightly trapezoid, I think. Or it could be just um, perspective effect. Anyway, it just doesn't seem like a real chip. So we'll replace this. We've got one more of real but rebuild ones. And so it'll be very interesting to see if this comes to life. I mean some chomping going on down on that board too. Yeah, this... It looks different. It doesn't look like it's been laser done. Okay, that's a bit of a concern there. That feels like it's either suffered heat or something. Or they've just sort of roughed it up or something. I don't know. Anyway, let's clean this one up and put down the new chip. White with alcohol, the black swab painted. Uh, yeah, that's true. Although they could be just using some like really thin alcohol, uh, epoxy. No, it's not painted. Like I said, it's definitely a laser engraving. But it just feels wrong. It is a high current trace, it just normally doesn't protrude like that. So I'm a little bit worried that maybe it kind of got a bit hot. Make sure I get this right, because like I said, I've only got one 3215 left until my new batch arrives. And with the way shipping has been lately, it might be Christmas before that happens. And AliExpress has basically taken away all of the reasonable high-speed shipping options I used to have. And sort of told me to go take a hike. Anytime I try to use them, it lets me pay the people and then I get a message in a day or two saying the shipping company doesn't want to let it get sent. They want you to pay more because you're in a, a really far away place in Australia. It's like, ah, oh, crikey, mate. They're like, it cost me 40 or 50 bucks for the shipping and then they go, oh, we need another 30 bucks. At that point I'm like, ah, GTFO, and I just have to drop back to 
boring old normal shipping which takes forever. So I mean, these chips they don't look great but they do look genuine. They just look like beaten up, beaten up old pools. Alibaba of course, you know, like, well, they'll be like, well, how many reels of CD3215s do you want? You can't go to Alibaba and say, I'll take 10 CD3215s. They'll be like, you mean 10 boxes or 10 reels, don't you? So if you don't, what are you doing here? Go to AliExpress. Alibaba does not take kindly to people doing small numbers. Okay. Well, send to me and I send to you. Hmm, oh, we'll see. I used to deal, before AliExpress came around, um, I would deal with Alibaba a lot. Uh, I know Creature would remember that we would be constantly trying to track down new things and stuff through Alibaba because it was the only way to get to the factories in China effectively. Uh, there was another chap in the chat, his name is Foxabillo and uh, he used to do that quite a lot. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I've got the orientation of that right. I'm pretty sure I did but I'm sort of nervous enough that I'm going to double check. I'm almost up at um, SSD V-Reg levels of nerves. Alrighty, let's see how we go now. Now that we've replaced what we think are fake chips. Ah, 20 volts fake chips. Well, well, well. That was interesting. Something... Okay, look, there's no guarantee they were fake chips, but they sure as hell look like fake chips. So, I've got three real chips here. One fake chip. So you can see as you bring the light over these ones, and these are completely different like batches and stuff, you can still always see the laser engraving. But you go over this one and it's like, nope, not here. And you can sort of see this kind of um, pitting of this top surface on the edge here that sort of indicates that yes something has been cast you know put over the top of the top and while you do get similar effect it just doesn't behave the same way the top layer is completely you know um, it maintains its integrity even when you like break it away like this it doesn't start looking like this Compare them in diode mode. Are you insane? How am I to, Come on, that's not even funny. Besides, I don't even know if they're functioning chips. Yeah, it's sanded or something. Uh, well, okay, let's see which pin's gonna be ground. So, what have we got? This pin here should be ground. So I can always attach a little wire to it. Just power input. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to do any of those things. But at least we know we've got one. Like I said, original, like I said, the biggest giveaway is the fact that when you're directly above it, you can still see the engraving on the originals. 
not so much on that. And, and like I said, the fonts are wrong as well. So look at the zeros. See the C00? You look at that font. See how they're more like uh, ellipses? As opposed to on this one, the ovals. That's not a guarantee. Because, you know, I'm sure they have slightly different uh, fonts for different factors. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, mate. Anyway, the yeah, ovals. How many tests we got to do here? Ovals. I've got a huge batch of duds somewhere here. Right, you hopeless batch of good for nothing, useless CD thirty two fifteens that cost me a hundred plus bucks and I still can't even get you to work. Now you've run away. You've run away like the scaredy scaredy that you are. And yes, I am ever so slightly losing my mind. You would too if it happened to you. I can't find them. Geez, I only had it like this afternoon. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Look at the ones. Okay, okay, so for these ones, the ones have the nice little, um, they got, what do you call it? They got the serifs on them, top and bottom. That one doesn't have a serif on the bottom, but it is on the top. Likewise, that one. And that's the same there. No, the ones are... Well, they're not identical. These ones, if you look at the one closely, they have a short fall before they come out. So, like, you know, the like a one width down before it comes out. Whereas these ones come out straight from the top, so it's a faster laser cut. There's no turning off of the laser, readjusting, and then shifting again. But overall, to me, the greatest indicator here is the fact that the laser is being pushed over this extremely quickly, or it just doesn't have the power. Whereas all of the genuine ones, you yeah, know, that laser cuts right in. makes me wonder how many other machines this person's fixed so to speak and not had any success with again the ovals there and again you can see everything even when the lights directly over it likewise oh these are Z ones holy damn oh baby didn't realize I had some Z chips in stock Again, another real one, yeah. Alright, I, I think we can call that a most likely fake chip. You can always test with a simple Arduino. We don't use that word around here. We don't believe, we don't acknowledge Arduino. It's considered offensive to my people. Have I got yours, 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 yours? Which one are you talking about, Joe? Are you talking about your uh, Dell? Yes, I do have it. It's down in a box over there. Ah, I've got to get check that power supply for it, though. That's the hold up, the power supply. It's not the same. Atmel, 80 mega, 80 tiny, all that sort of stuff is Atmel. Arduino is like someone came along and decided to get fancy with some macros because they were too lazy to learn it properly 
and it just ruined everything. It's an abomination. Absolute abomination of the purity of the Atmel. How dare they do that? How dare they? Because it's too cheap? No, no, no. It's just because um, Atmel AVRs were such... Well, they are such delights to work with and at the time when they came out it was sort of like what do you want 6502 6800 picks you know things like that. Your, your choices weren't great yeah you you had the msp 430s they were good but then you know arduino my god you made me say it. oh god i'm going to die now AVRs turn up and it was just like here you go you can program this with like one or two resistors out of your parallel port and um, it's really easy to code and pretty much every instruction roughly is about one cycle it doesn't run hyper fast as in doesn't scream its guts out going nowhere and it's not too expensive they're not cheap they weren't cheap but they also weren't too expensive they were a revelation I think the reason why I sort of get a little bit niggly on the whole programming side of it is because realistically AVR coding was already so simple. It was it was genuinely so simple already. And in some ways I found Arduino made it more difficult. The only sort of upside is that, you know, you could have all these different libraries which helped, but they could have been done anyway. But it has now grown to the point where it's sort of more of a... Um, it's kind of like a Java layer on top of everything. Look, I've got, I've got grey hair, I'm getting old, I'm grumpy. Leave me alone. Let me, let me have my get off my grass moments. <laughs> get off my grass, you young whuppersnappers. Okay, let's see, here we go. Hopefully we don't get any smoke. To be fair, I didn't test to see if the 20 volts actually went up to the higher currents. But it's looking good. Three, four. That's healthy. Five. We want to see that creeping up. Keep going up. We've got an Apple logo. Oh, the Mac repairs, yeah, um, the 2179's a disaster. They're just all over the place. The, what was it, a, I think you had a 1700 or an, you had a 2141 or a A1990, I can't remember which one it was, but that's fixed, that's fixed, so I can send that to, like so I was just waiting for you to get back home because I didn't want to send it to a dress where no one's going to be. Okay, this thing's taking a while to boot, but it might be going into that mode. Oh, there we go. Okay, we've got 1% battery. We are alive. It's a bit hard to tell with all the gloss, but you can see the island outline there. Hemorrhoids now. Thank God I've avoided that one. For now, I dare say. I've got different things like I um, spleen and liver pains quite often. They're legacy pains from um, many years ago, about 15 years ago now it would have been. We think we picked up um, glandular fever and it ruined us. It, funnily enough, the, the fever itself, the actual acute glandular fever was not that bad. It was like, oh, okay, you know, we've got a bit of a cold flu, whatever. But it was the chronic effects that wrecked us. Um, we would get days where our spleen or our liver would just feel like it's about to explode within. And I end up getting like CT scans and all that sort of stuff. And they're like, we don't know. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm so confident with the outcomes that you people give me. But um, over the years, it's sort of come down. But 
we find every now and then, funnily enough, often quite at the same time for us. Uh, we can, within a couple of hours, we can get this uh, flaring up of our spleen or liver again. It ruins us, yes. Can data be gotten off the failed ones? I don't know. I'm going to dig around, but currently not yet. I'll work on some more. Uh, they sort of are the ones that pushed me over the edge, which made me put up the bounty for seeing if we can get a board to work with only two CD3215s. Because I have replaced all of them and I'm still not getting anywhere. And I know they're not fakes that I'm replacing with because I use the same chips that I just put in here. I'm just waiting for this to clock up more than 1%. Jeez, John, that's bad that you almost died. That's really bad. Like I said, we didn't really notice it. You know, it was just a like, oh, yeah, I've got a bit of a cold and flu. But yeah, a couple of months later, we just had these ongoing issues. And it was like, what the hell is going on? I'd say the sickest I've ever felt is with dengue fever. Uh, the second time I got it, it was just horrible I, I did shave the beard today I did honest when I say shave you know I got the the buzz cut thing I think the worst thing about the one I've got at the moment is that it won't do a clean job the first pass so you end up sitting where with this beard trimmer a load of bollocks just like going, yeah, over and over and over. And it creates these like teeny tiny, super sharp little pieces of hair that just get everywhere. You really need to have a proper um, barber's thingamajig and just do like one pass. And it gets the depth that you want. Don't pass over it again. Now I'm thinking about all my neurological problems. I was an auto tech for 28 years. Oh, geez, okay, tea time. Yeah, I mean, with the exposure of all the petrochemicals and things like that. Any thoughts on the rustling? Um, you know, to be honest, I haven't actually tried it. I see that Linux is now supporting it, so at some point I'm probably going to have to have a look at it. But for me, I'm mostly C, C++ -ified C. I don't really do C++ much. Not pure C++. Um, PHP, I know it's unsexy, but you got to admit, since it sort of came out in the world back in 1999 or 2000, what was it, 98 came out, it's still a dominant force. And the fact that I think PHP was like a very, um, it had a very good impedance match with how I coded, which is to say complete shit, but um, yeah, it worked for me. <laughs> and shell programming i don't really call shell programming programming but some people like to say that they can code in shell shell coding is really more just like i consider it scripting it's not really coding it's dancing with the devil worst thing i had was apl from 25 to 28 year acute promyelectic leukemia that sounds nasty. That sounds like that would have a long, chronic things you have to look out for. Rossman with his grandpa and his Rossman, yeah. Um, you got to give the guy some credit. Um, there are other things in play with Lewis, and he does a sterling job in being the person he is in spite of that so i always give him full credit for um you know being out there doing what he does he yeah it's um i can't really say much but anyway it, if you know if you've followed lewis for a long time and you've seen a good number of his videos there's a few little hints he drops and yeah so needs to say i always give thumbs up for lewis for continuing to do what he does because it's a tough gig what he's facing 
WordPress is doing it. Oh God, WordPress. Oh God. Why don't you just call it Arduino Press? The best thing I love about WordPress is the fact that if anybody comes at my website with looking for you know, do WordPress with one of their queries, I know I can immediately IP block them. I do not do WordPress. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's um, like Arduino. It's actually very effective. It works well for a good number of people, and I think that's great. But it's not something I would ever put on my uh, system. I will go as far as um, jQuery. I think jQuery is great. But going all the way to WordPress, I'm probably, yeah, I'm asking for, to get exploited if I put WordPress. So, John, glandular fever, I've got vitamin D deficiency. So, uh, oh. I gotta walk out in the sun for ten minutes, and I'll get my monthly supply of vitamin D. But are you, yeah, how much sunlight do you get? Okay, we're up to four percent now, so I can actually stop waffling, and it's before midnight, which means I can actually finish up before I turn into a pumpkin, and then I can go and code as a pumpkin. See, oh god, see. <laughs> yeah, see panel. Handy again, a very handy wrapper, and yeah, I don't mock anyone who uses cPanel. I just personally wouldn't choose to use it. I know that yeah, things like I got. Don't get me wrong, things like Arduino, WordPress, cPanel, PHP, <laughs> um, very useful tools very useful creations because they allow people to get into look after things and do things that they might not have been able to quite reach uh, without giving up in the past so as much as I mock these things it's more a case of I personally wouldn't utilize them but I can see the value in them for other people and yeah, I'll joke and about them, but at the same time, I also know that, you know what, it makes your life easier, and that's a good thing, as so long as the people who create those packages, you know, the people who run cPanel, WordPress, all that sort of stuff, keep on their toes and, you know, try and keep the exploits down to a minimum. Not much. I'm a nerd and I work nights in security. Okay, yeah, you're going to need your, <laughs> you need your vitamin D tablets. I will probably get enough vitamin D just when I go out in the afternoon at 5.30, usually, around this time of the year. And I will do mowing until the sun sets. That's enough for me. I don't get a sunburn, uh, thank God. But it's certainly... If you go any earlier than 5 o'clock, you're going to get burnt. Thoughts on Python? I think Python probably, it, it does seem to be a good language. The problem with Python and likewise with Perl before that was that it there's something in them both that I just see, keep stumping my toe on. And I don't know what it was really with Perl because really Perl is very C-ish. Um, it has a lot of flamboyance, um, a fair bit of purple prose with the way it does all the regular expressions. I think the fact that Perl had its own format of regular expressions rather than the POSIX regular expressions kind of threw me as well. Python, the white, active white space is what throws me. Um, I think the reason being is that when I'm editing, depending on what I'm working on, I like to change the way it uh, is formatted quite a bit and in Python you're just asking for trouble doing that uh, I obviously editors that understand Python will keep you in check they will stop you from ruining your code but yeah I if Python had the ability for an optional delimiter instead of tabs and spaces then I probably would be a more avid Python user. 
Well, yeah, I mean, Fortran I used to do a lot of work in, Fortran 77, and I was fine with that. But I think the reason being is that even though Fortran was um, also s column sensitive, it was a much stricter sort of context, uh, whereas Python is a little more free-flowing and subsequently it can be easier to end up botching up your spaces. So, yeah, the bug. Mother did a lot of programming in Perl. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people loved it. And I tried, I tried really hard to learn Perl and it just didn't stick. My brain just rejected it outright all the time. But that's when I found PHP and myself and PHP got along like hydrogen and oxygen. You know, we just exploded with happiness. So, yeah, that's how I became a PHP person. And don't get me wrong, PHP is... It is a real hodgepodge of a language, but that's if you look at it in its entirety. You know, it's got... It's it's kind of like a Homer Simpson language, like the Homer Simpson car. PHP is kind of like the Homer Simpson of... Uh, if he created a language, that's what it would be. But if you stick to a certain subset of it, it's fine. SQL... Um, I started out... Let's see, I'm just going to make it ugly for you all now. Yeah, <laughs> ugly. Yeah, I started out the MySQL, at least before that it was DBase and things like that. Yeah, because I sort of came from the era of WordPerfect 5.1, DOS 6.22, at least at the end of it. Um, DBase 3, Lotus 1, 2, 3. And so you'd have all those manuals. Oh, and Turbo Pascal, that was... That was your create the next world changing piece of software armament, so to speak. You, know, you had your Lotus, your DBase, your WordPerfect, and your Turbo Pascal. And with that, you could do anything. This is before Delphi, by the way. Funnily enough, when Delphi came out, I dropped it off. I didn't really care for it. It felt too uh, Fisher Price like. It just, I don't know why, but their choice of icon styles and widgets just didn't I didn't like them the windows ones I preferred anyway back to um, SQL I started out with MySQL and I was a real big proponent of it but then I started running into the corner case issues that MySQL was known pretty well for back in like the mid to late 90s and I jumped over to Postgres and what I preferred about Postgres is that it was very... It um, penalized performance for the sake of integrity and um, predictability. It was, it was a choice of, you know, you can either run really quick queries with MySQL or you can run a very standard uh, dependable setup with Postgres. And so I, I went Postgres. But even these days now, I don't really use Postgres anymore. I've got one database left, which is the one that I've been running since the late 90s, and that's all my accounting and things like that. But everything else these days, I do SQLite, uh, SQLite 3. It's fantastic. It's um, I would put SQLite down as one of the top five most important software developments for the software world because prior to SQLite 3 or SQLite you had things like Sleepy Cat, um, flat databases, I think it was also known as Berkeley flat file databases you had MS um, Access, MS Access, you had Microsoft Database, you had it was a real cluster of very obscure different um, database storage systems all with their quirks and annoyances and you know the APIs weren't exactly available on everything you want them to be and then there was licensing costs Sleepy Cat was particularly expensive considering what it was uh, oh and, and what is it? Novell had its own thing as well so uh, and then SQLite comes out and it's got all the best part of uh, simplicity, it's got performance, it's got SQL queries, it was it was a no-brainer and 
everything uses it now. It's just like, it's just ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Basic. Oh, that was fun. QBasic was where it really was fun because, you know, at that point you could compile your basic into an EXE. That was like, wow, amazing. I don't have to use an interpreter anymore. I have looked at um, Lazarus, which is sort of a Delphi ball and pascal compatible system but what i found is after you get used to using c when you go back to pascal you feel like you're writing an essay for everything um it's just so wordy. <laughs> it's just so wordy whereas in c you've got these you know, single character type um functions and oh i oh, can't think of the word anyway you do th what you want in so much less. Grab an Amstrad. Oh no, I was a Z80 person. Getting flashbacks to the days of doing sysadmin work on MS SQL clusters for news broadcast. Oh, that would have driven you mad. Uh, I don't know, yeah, the amount of money people had to throw at Microsoft to have a dependable system that could do failovers and things like that back then. It was colossal amount of money I mean they were offering it and I think it's a testament to Microsoft's understanding of how the market works are that or luck that in spite of them starting right from the back where no one took them seriously they dominated the market for the most part I got a cough <coughs> <coughs> So, yeah, I mean, even Microsoft Windows itself, when Windows 1 came out, it was like, what is this? This is a joke. And you had other products like DeskView, uh, DeskView X, and they were superior in so many ways. But Microsoft just, yeah, they just kept winning. They worked out how to do it. And when Office landed, it was all over. It was like, okay, this is going to be the operating system and Office suite for the next 15, 20 years for sure and it turned out that way because like with Arduino, WordPress, cPanel, all that sort of stuff it brought the difficult to the end user and made it easy and that was all, yeah, that's the thing it's kind of why MacBooks and iPhones are so popular yeah, it's, it's not always people wanting to go, look at me, I'm so rich, I've got an iPhone. Most of the time it's a case of people don't want to have to care about the technical details. And this is something that a lot of technical people, particularly when you're younger, don't grok, as they like to say. And that is, people just don't care. You know, they just want to open it up, do what they want, and not be impeded by technical issues and you can say yeah but you get so much more value in terms of clock speed and processing power and storage capacity and screen or whatever for your dollar if you go this other route and people are like I don't care about that and that's the thing they, it's not like a an aloof like oh, I don't care Yeah, it's a case of they really just don't care it's kind of like expecting people who just need a car to commute to care about what carburetor they've got sitting on top of their four or six or eight or maybe five cylinder um, or what their diff ratio is or yeah all that sort of stuff it's like there's the separation of two different types of wants so you know if you want best performance per dollar or capacity per dollar then yeah you know you get to make that choice but for most people, when it comes to Apple Macs and the iPhones, it's a case of, I just want to pick that up, I want to make that call, I want to get the answer, I want to send my pictures, and I don't want to have to care about what's this technical feature I have to turn on or off here. I don't know, it's confusing to me, I don't like it, give me my Apple back. And that's how they get that market. Still on WordPerfect 5.1. I um, my first software job. One of my first software jobs was to write a program that would extract information from WordPerfect 5.1 documents. And funnily enough, I think I was 16 or 17 at the time. Whatever, I can't remember. 
it was to a legal firm in this town. I didn't live here at that time, but it was to a legal firm in this town, and that was one of my first jobs. And I think I charged them 50 Australian dollars at the time, so, you know, let's call it 1990, 91, yeah, call it 91. Uh, that was a fair bit of money for me, even though it really wasn't a lot of money. But um, I got the job done, I was happy, they were happy, and that was my first uh, commercial software contract, as it were. Is there some way we can get more power in my Intel 166? Um, the 166 is already such a beautiful chip. Um, so long as you've got it running on a BX chipset motherboard. That was my hand that made that noise. You watch, I can't do it again now. No, that just sounds wrong. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm out of here. i got to go do some fun things now, rather than talking to you lot. Thank you all for being here. It was an interesting one because we found some fake chips, or at least we believe they're fake. And, of course, we did still find other issues on the board, so we fixed those up as well because they would have caused other quirky issues, like that resistor that would have resulted in the touch panel perhaps not shutting down when the lid was shut and that corrosion that we saw, that could have caused issues with voltage regulation, I think it was. I can't remember. Anyway, the point is, it's a good thing we found those. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you all for seeing me not make a complete disaster on myself tonight. I'll catch up with you next time. Until then, you'll take care. I'll catch you later.